To be sure, an annual payment of a hundred pounds may sound better than parting with fifteen hundred pounds at once, but well, suppose the old lady lives for another fifteen years, or more. As it is, without any addition from me, they will each inherit about three thousand pounds upon their mother's death. Well, think how comfortable they shall be. Oh, they shall live so cheap. No carriage, no horses, hardly any servants. We could be useful to them in so many other ways. Uh, gifts from the house and so forth. Yes! Not the china or the plate. Well, think how odd it would look once removed from Norland. <laughs> of course, but I do wish my half-sisters well. Oh, so sweet, mm -hmm. my dear. I do hope for their sake they do not linger long at Norland. It can only cause them pain. It is clear. We can remain here no longer. We must leave at once. Please, no, 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 no. Marianne, John and Fanny are due today. We cannot leave without greeting them. It will be most ill read But I shall die if I have to remain at Norland. My heart will break. You cannot ask it of me. I refuse to leave Norland, and I will not welcome Fanny here. Oh, oh yeah. Margaret, don't be ridiculous. Stand up. Mr. and Mrs. John Dashford, ma'am, and Mr. Edward Ferris. Madam, once again, my heartfelt condolences. John and Fanny, welcome to Norland. Ma'am, you know my eldest daughter, Eleanor. Sir, ma'am. <clears throat> oh, yes. Ma'am, may I present Fanny's brother, Mr. Edward Ferris. Edward, my stepmother, Mrs. Dashwood, and Miss Dashwood. Mr. Ferris, you are very welcome. Ma'am, Miss Dashwood. Uh, shall we sit? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. I'm sorry. You must excuse my brother, ma'am. We have a long way to go to make him fit for Parliament, don't we, Edward? Parliament? Oh, yes. Well. I hope, John, your journey down was comfortable. Oh, tolerable. Thank you. The country here does seem prodigiously dismal. <laughs> Ma'am, tonight John and I will take the usual guest rooms, but we must give thought to more permanent quarters. You shall wish to establish your new rooms as soon as possible. Well, I... I wonder if I may lift the burden. Perhaps we could look around the house and see where I might be of most use to you. I thought you might wish to do so, so I instructed the housekeeper to be ready with the keys. Did you? Oh dear. John dear, you will wish to come too. Miss Dashwood. I must. Oh, uh, I I'm sorry. Uh, I thought I really you meant. You must um, apologise. Well, I must apologise. Goodness sake. Miss Dashwood, I do believe we've been heckled by your writing desk. Really, sir? I cannot think it. No, truly, it spoke, and most definitely in the terms of a late Hepperwhite writing desk. Are you stupid? <laughs> yes, very. Margaret. Is Langston too thick for a Hepperwhite? Good heavens. How would you know that? I read. Do you like to read, Edward? Whenever I can. It's not always permitted. But you're a grown-up. You may please yourself. Would that were true? I can fetch you any book from the library, you know. Most kind. Perhaps I should begin with something on furniture. Oh, you could, but that's quite dull. Perhaps you should choose for me, then. I will. Oh, and thank you. How do you do, Cousin Edward? Thank you for hiding me. <laughs> Mr. Ferris, you may not realise this, but that is Margaret at her most affable. Her manners are quite deplorable, but I congratulate you. Nothing, too. I mean, poor girl. I'm not expecting manners when her father's just died. Ah. Yes, yours too. Uh, I'm so sorry. You Is are aware that she is likely to present you with the most horrid gothic novel. Good Lord, are they found in your library? <laughs> no, but in Marianne's room they are not unknown. But not yours? I would never condemn a horrid romance, but I prefer more rational writing. Mr. Pope's wit amuses me. Ah, a lady of my acquaintance refers to Pope as prodigious... Dull and prosy. But no, the delight is in the wordplay. Exactly. To err is human, 
to purr feline. Her <laughs> favourite. Oh, mine too. Shall we see if we can find some more appropriate reading matter then? After you, Miss Dashwood.
He can hardly be called handsome. No. The expression in his eyes and the general sweetness of his countenance, once they are perceived, can but fail to... I shall very soon think him handsome when you tell me to love him as a brother. Marianne, no. I mean, I think very highly of him. I do not deny my esteem, my liking. Esteem? <laughs> liking? Cold-hearted Eleanor, say those words again and I shall leave the room this instant. Very well, then. Believe my feelings to be a little stronger than I have declared. Further than that, you must not believe. He's far from being independent. His mother was sure to put many difficulties in his way if he were to wish to marry a woman who had neither fortune nor rank. And you are sure you are not yet engaged to him? Good morning, ladies. Good morning, Fanny. Eleanor, my cousin in Devon has a house which may suit. Oh, excuse me, Fanny. Not at all. Am I to understand you're contemplating leaving us? Oh, well, not at once. Such a coincidence as Edward, too, is leaving. He is. Our mother summons him to Brighton. She's there for her health, you know. It is time he moved in the very best circle given the elevated extent of his expectations. Do not you agree, Miss Dashwood? His expectations yes. are Yes, and I need hardly tell you of the cares of a mother to ensure the very best alliance for their offspring. <laughs> Indeed. Any couple attracted by similar disposition and true affection should be promoted by their family. <laughs> but what do young people know of true affection? Young men certainly are tragically vulnerable to the wrong sort, are they not? I couldn't say. Ah, but my mother is firm in her resolution. Her sons will marry well. Their duty has been made clear to them. From birth. From, from birth. birth? They will marry into fortune and rank. Indeed, so fierce is my mother's jealousy for Edward's advancement that I pity any young woman who attempts to draw him in. I always consider that to be a very vulgar expression. The girls know better, but I will ask you, Fanny, not to repeat it in front of Margaret. My darlings, my cousin Sir John Middleton has offered me a cottage on his estate. Oh. And he invites us all to join him, to live with him at Barton Park. Fanny, I am sure you will wish to inform your brother of his mother's summons. Pray tell Margaret to join me here. Oh, Eleanor, how could she Barton be Park so in Devonshire. Are you sure, Mama? How much? Read for yourself, my darling. Marianne, do not speak of it. It is not Eleanor's way. Oh, she was so hateful towards Eleanor. Want to part her from Edward now? I will not stay here to allow Eleanor to be exposed to such insinuations. Devon, it's so far away. We thought not to leave Sussex. The farther from Fanny, the better for us all. He seems truly anxious to accommodate us all. I've rarely seen so friendly a letter. Indeed, I feel closer to Sir John, though a distant cousin, than to other nearer relations. But. What of the cottage, Eleanor? Does it suit your ideas of economy? You know we are ruled by you in these things. The terms are so easy, and Sir John's so obliging. I feel he's rather offering to pay us to take the cottage. I cannot conceive of a more generous landlord. He even offers us his carts and his carriages for removal. So, farewell to Norland. Oh dear. Yes, my darlings, but consider. We may invite whomsoever we choose to Barton Park, and no one can stand in his, their way. Marianne. There, no one 
less than a quarter hour of rinsing and scrubbing for each item. A quarter hour? But the soap and lye will ruin my hands. Then why embark upon laundry? We're well, thought to be of use. I know our circumstances are much straightened. I had so wanted to get that spot out of your glove. My glove? Girls, Thomas has seen Sir John's carriage turning up the valley and he's sure to call. What is all this? Laundry? Eleanor, what possessed you to attempt laundry? I? Oh, never mind. Betsy, Thomas, be quick, girls, and prepare yourselves. Yes, ma'am. Thomas, can you clear the all this? Yes, ma'am. And Betsy, will you help the girls, please? We'll get out the malt tea later when Sir John and Mrs. Jennings arrive. I do not see the need for all this fuss. After all, they have visited us every day since we arrived. On the first day, we all had cobwebs in our hair. They did not visit yesterday. No, that is because we dined at the park in the evening. It is true, Mama. You have seen Sir John and Mrs Jennings one and twenty and a half times since we came into Devon. Half? At church last week, he only nodded. And I did not dine at Barton Park yesterday evening. Then we should be grateful for his liberality and friendship. I certainly worry less about our housekeeping since he's taken to sending so much fruit and produce. Though I think we have Mrs. Jennings to thank for organising it all. I do not think I should like my sister-in-law keeping house for me when I marry. That's my darling, it's because you are not a man nor a widower. I think there's an eminently sensible arrangement. They rub along so well together and share the same sociable nature. Exhaustingly so. Ingratitude, Marianne. No, but Mama, I cannot like Mrs. Jennings' fixation with matchmaking. So keen to find out how many broken hearts we left behind in Sussex. I blushed for Eleanor several times. You need not have done so. Your blushes and anguished looks were far harder to bear than a little teasing over tea. Why should Mrs. Jennings see something? Is it over Edward? Margaret, you are not to mention Edward Ferris. Not ever. Do you understand? Why? Why hasn't Edward come like you promised? He was going to bring a telescope. It is not the done thing. The discussion of beau and love affair in company is for to the vulgar. Is it not, Mama? Oh, yes, indeed. Oh. Is that Colonel Brandon riding alongside them? Colonel Brandon? friend of Sir John's, he dined with us at the park yesterday, very gentlemanly. And unmarried, as Mrs. Jennings did not cease to point out. You cannot fault his taste, Marianne. He was much moved by your music. I am certain his eyes were moist. Yet his lips did not move. He said only, thank you, afterwards. Such reserve. Although I dare say it's all spirits could manage at his age. Oh. Is he old then? Over thirty. Really? A poor soul should be spared the indignity of talk of love at that age. The flame is long since extinguished. Careful, Marianne. He's not much younger than I am. No, but Mama, he spoke of a flannel belt for rheumatics. Such things we speak of age, do they not? Good afternoon, my dear. Oh, so oh, I we simply yeah. had to bring you these plums, for I am not alone with them. Hello, 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 Mrs. Dashwood, my dear cousin, how good our country air is for you. You must have lost 15 years since coming into Devonshire. And the Colonel and Sir John shoot far too many birds for our estate, and I tell them to cut down, but there you are. Gentlemen in their sport, there is naught to be done about it. <laughs> and Miss Dashwood, Miss Marianne, oh, and Margaret, we missed you yesterday. We must have you out and into society, eh? Oh, and the Colonel remembered the music for Miss Marianne. Thank you. I am well. Uh, forgive me for calling on oh, so short an acquaintance. Oh, Colonel, we all know why you're here. And it begins with M, does it not? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Music. Oh, yeah. uh, you played so well last night and mentioned the pieces were new to you, so I took the liberty of bringing these from my music room. Thank you, uh, but I cannot... Uh, merely alone, Miss Marianne. I expect you'll soon master them. No, you see, we do not have a pianoforte here at the cottage. No pianoforte? But you play with such a spirit. A no pianoforte, an oversight, a sorry oversight on my part. I will procure one and have it installed at once. Oh, Sir John, you are far too generous. Sir, we have not the room. Ah, 
Oh, I have a capital notion. We shall knock through this wall of the cottage and build a music room. Such talents cannot be denied. Well, I had thought that an extra bedroom would be splendid for guests. Mama, it is already September. <coughs> Adding another set of rooms would involve building through the winter. The cottage would not be habitable. Well, did you think that you must move to the park with us for the duration? <gasps> what times we shall have. I do have a pianoforte, but it remains at Norland. Oh. We could not arrange tra transport for it until after the autumn storms are over. But thank you, Colonel. I have not thought to cause such commotion with a simple gift. Oh. Forgive me. Did you say an extra bedroom for guests, Mrs. Dashwood? Are we expecting a stream of lovelorn young men from Sussex then? No, <laughs> just one. Oh, oh now we come to it. I knew there was a lover hiding. Whose is he? Oh, oh, is it yours, Miss Marianne? I think it is. We'll see how she blushes. Oh, come, Margaret. We're all friends here. I must not tell, must I, Eleanor? <laughs> I cannot imagine what you mean. So, the weather particularly. Uh, so it is Eleanor's bow who we pursue. Tally ho, Mrs. Jennings. Tally ho. Uh, Margaret, remember, whatever your conjectures may be, you have no rights to repeat them. I never had any conjectures until you told me about it yourself. Oh. <laughs> hoist, Miss Marianne. Hoist by your own petard. <laughs> yes, Miss Dashwood. My tenants tell me that such Pray, is Miss. Tell me all about it. Mama, may I be excused? I have an increasingly sore head. I really must walk. I must not tell Mom, or will I know who he is and where he is? Oh, I am um, uh, near Norland. I, I have it. It's the curate. No, Mom, he has no profession. Oh. Margaret, walk with me. Oh, Margaret, tell us the name. There is no name, Mom. It is pure invention on the child's part. She grows heated. It is time for her war. It's not pure invention. His name begins with F. Come on, Margaret. Oh, F. Oh, oh uh, Felix. Uh, <laughs> Fitzherbert. Oh, uh, Fitzwilliam. This is Gregory. I do not mean to interfere, but the weather is closing in. Perhaps I should accompany your daughters? Oh, that is kind, Colonel, but there is no need. There are no dwellings nearby, and they, they often roam the hills. No, 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 sir, you must understand. Margaret has a vivid imagination, and Marianne is far too romantic. If you were to extend the cottage, Sir John, uh, would you knock through this wall here? Your man Bennet might do it with ease, might well, you? Now, Colonel, we see you in a hurry to have Miss Marianne's music room all fitted up, do we not? You may smile, sir. But I have a nose for romance. I can almost spot it, can I not? Indeed you can, Mum. But I believe in this case, I have his design figured out better than you. Oh, how so? Well, if you were to marry the girl and take her to Whitwell, then she would have a music room already fitted out for her, would she not? Uh, such jests might alarm the ladies, sir. Oh, nonsense. All young ladies love to talk. Oh, my daughters for their marriages. Oh, oh. I said the weather was on the turn. Mum, it is closing and changes quickly in the hills. I really think I should go look for Miss Margaret and Miss Marianne. Mama, Eleanor, she fell and he's carrying her. Oh, oh my goodness. Don't oh. worry, she's perfectly well. She just took a nasty fall. Oh. It's more short than anything else. Betty, bring towels. We are indebted to you. May I ask your name? Willoughby of Alvin Buzz. <laughs> will you sit down? I'm afraid I've already left the mud and wet enough. I will go, but please allow me to return tomorrow to leave a better first impression. Please do. Tomorrow. Farewell, and my very best wishes for your recovery. Thank you, and goodbye. Well now, Willoughby of Alvin What a man. Willoughby of Annam, what a gentleman. You know him then? Oh, uh, yes, uh, he uh, comes down every year. And what sort of young man is he? Uh, well, he is uh, one of the finest shots and uh, the boldest rider in England. <laughs> is that all you have to say for him? What are his talents, his pursuits, his genius? Oh, upon my soul, I do not know him as well as all that, but, uh, oh, he does have the loveliest little spotted bitch of a pointer. Was she out with him? But 
Who is he? Where does he come from? Does he have a house at Allenham? He is very well worth catching, I can tell you, Miss Dashwood. He has a pretty little estate of his own in Somersetshire besides. And if I were you, I would not give him up to my younger sister. Miss Marianne must not expect to have all the men to herself. Brandon will be jealous. <laughs> I do not think that Mr. Willoughby will be incommoded by the attempts of either of my daughters towards what may be called catching him. But I am pleased to know that he is a decent young man. Oh, and last Christmas, a little hop that we uh, held at the hall, he danced from eight o'clock until four without once sitting down. Is that so? And with elegance, with spirits? Oh, yes, and he was up again at eight to ride to hunt. Well, that is exactly what a young man ought to be. Whatever be his pursuits, his eagerness in them should know no moderation. Oh, I see what you're about. You're going to set your cap at him and not longer think of poor Brandon. That is an expression, Sir John, which I particularly dislike. <laughs> Mrs Jennings, Miss Marion has been soaked and has taken hurt. I think her family can better administer to her in our absence. Ooh, Shall we? I nose well out of joint. Never mind, Brandon. You must seek Miss Dashwood's hand instead. Once we have supplanted the mysterious Mr. F. Thank you, Thomas. Good afternoon, my dears. <laughs> Mr. Flowers, 
I am so sorry. I did not expect I to see you. I had no idea you came into Plymouth at all. Indeed, we would not normally do so, but Mrs. Jennings was coming into town to meet her daughter and invited us to come along. Marianne was in great need of lace. How are your mother and Miss Margaret? Very well, thank you. And how is your sister, our sister, Fanny? In truth, I have not seen them. I have been... Miss Dashwood. I'm terribly awkward with words, and there's something I've been meaning to say. It's just that when I talk of feelings, forgive me. Go on. When I arrived at Norland, I did not expect to become so attached to the place, or the people in it. But you, you, you've been such a very good friend to me, and a, a, a word. <laughs> Mr. Ferris. Oh, Edward, Edward, please. Edward. When I was students with Mr. Pratt, I never... All I ever wanted was... No, what I'm trying to say is... Pray, do not distress yourself on my account. No. Of course. It is enough that you are well. I am. We are all very well. Good. That is good, then. Do excuse me, but I'm expected. Of course. Eleanor! Eleanor, come on! We'll miss the coach! For the carriages? We are a little early, Mama. And we appear to have lost Margaret. Oh, she's probably run round to the stables. I'm more concerned about Marianne. I thought that she and Willoughby were but a few minutes ahead of us. It was so kind of him to walk us over from the cottage. I believe he was walking Marianne. <laughs> when they are together, they have eyes for no one else. Indeed. Last night at the assembly, they had more than half the dances together. Mama, do you not think they go a little too far? There's been no talk of engagement, yet he singles her out, and she then returns the affection so openly that they are laughed at and spoken of as a couple by all our society. To be sure, if we were in London, their behaviour might be a little too exclusive, but this is the country. Oh, they agree on so much, and how beautifully they sing together. <laughs> There's more to marriage than duets. <laughs> oh, is that Colonel Brandon approaching? I do wish he wouldn't pine so for Marianne. His silences oppress his own spirits. Sir John hints at past disappointment and mysterious sorrow. I would not put it past Sir John to hint at pirate treasure and gothic murder. <laughs> <laughs> ah, good morning, Colonel. You must excuse me. I am in search of my daughter. Mom, uh, Miss Dashwood, I see I find you well. Is Miss Marianne to come today? For I'd arrange this visit to Whitwell largely to please her for the pretty wildernesses and hidden caves of the picturesque hermitage I felt that might appeal to her. You are too kind, Colonel. Marianne is nearby. Hmm, possibly, but how sad to see the amiable enthusiasm and spontaneity of youth of prejudice give way to everyday opinions. Yes, but there are inconveniences attending Marianne's feelings. She needs to learn moderation through a better acquaintance with reality. Oh, no, do not desire that. For such an acquaintance oft delivers a heart lesson that is far too harsh for gentle, youthful spirit. I, I once knew a lady who in temper and mind greatly resembled your sister, but who through a series of unfortunate circumstances, well, the lesson was too harsh. Excuse me, Miss Dashwood. Eleanor, Eleanor, they are engaged. What? Whom? Less Mom? haste, Meg, I beg of you. He has got a lock with her hair. I know it is hers for her... Well, I saw him cut it off just now. He has cut Marianne's hair. No, silly, only a lock. They were whispering and talking together as fast as can be, and he seemed to be pleading and begging. So she let her dress fall down, and he cut off a long, long lock. So he kissed it and folded it into his pocketbook. Good heavens. But I'm sure she'll be married to Mr. Willoughby very soon. Then I'll make up a pony and tell him how. May I know, Mama? <laughs> oh, how wonderful to have Willoughby. 
Burnaby and Edward for sons-in-law. Uh, Mama, please do not speak of this during the party today. We must allow Willoughby to show good form and seek your permission to address Marianne. He has been addressing Marianne this past two months. But nothing official has been said. Please, Mama, for Marianne's sake, let them choose the time of telling. Very well, my dear. <sighs> my sentiments exactly, Willoughby. It exactly captures the mood. <sighs> to find another who appreciates Cooper as I do. <laughs> And Shakespeare. <laughs> <laughs> Who could fail to do so? I must take you to see Keen in London. Only he can catch the magnificent horror of... Ah, oh, our pleasure party. At least, the Barton Cottage portion of it. <laughs> but you're not from Barton Cottage. Oh, wounded. A hit. A palpable hit. Margaret, you wrong me. I'm of the Barton Cottage party not only this morning, but always. <laughs> Colonel Brandon was here a moment ago. Uh, Colonel Brandon? The man everyone, whom everyone speaks so well of. And nobody cares about. <laughs> that is exactly what I think of him. <laughs> Do not boast of it, however. He is highly esteemed by all the family here at the park. Ah, oh, point against him. Who would suffer the indignity of being approved by such women as Mrs Jennings and Mrs Palmer? <laughs> Too true. <laughs> we have scarcely met Mrs Palmer, and Mrs Jennings has been the kindest soul. Uh, my dear sister, uh, Miss Dashwood, no. Even from you I will not have this. How long have you endured her oh so subtle pokes and insinuations about <laughs> Mr F? <laughs> Oh, hush! Others are coming. <laughs> good morning! Good morning! We shall have a fine time of it today, shall we not? Ah, Mr. Willoughby, there you are, with Miss Marianne, as usual. How do you do, sir? Mum. Now, you did not properly meet my daughter last night, did you? Mrs. Dashwood, please let me make her known to you. Oh, and her husband, who I'm sure is the drollest man I've ever met. Indeed he is. I said to him this morning, Lord, do you not long to meet the Dashwoods? And do you know what he said? No. Nothing! <laughs> not a word! <laughs> how excessively diverting! Oh, how he amuses me! We laugh so often, do we not, my dear Mr. Palmer? You do. <laughs> <laughs> See? See? Is it not diverting? Oh, now, this must be Miss Dashwood, is it not? Mrs. Palmer, how do you do, ma'am? Oh, I, I see, still pining for F, I hear. <laughs> well, and young um, Miss Margaret, oh, gone. And these two oh, are Miss, Miss Marianne. Marianne Dashwood and Mr. Willoughby. Who else? Did we not see you at the ball together last night? Such devotion. That would be a fine thing for we old married couples, would it not, eh, Mr. Palmer? It would not. <laughs> <laughs> I assume, Mr. Willoughby, you are visiting your aunt at Allenham. It is some months since we saw you at Cleveland. Your estate at Cum Magna must be sadly neglected, eh? Uh, my steward will contrive, ma'am. Oh, yes, contrive he will, but what can be keeping you here? What else would your company? Oh, 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 and we're all to meet Miss Lucy Steele, my cousin of some kind or another. Lucy, my dear, come and make the acquaintance of the Dashwoods. Oh, I could not manage without Lucy, truly I could not. Since she has come, she has been invaluable. Invaluable, I say. Even Mr. Palmer agrees. Lucy Steele, Mr. Palmer, where should I be without her? Still packing. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Dashwood, I am particularly pleased to meet you. You have been commended to me by a mutual friend. Oh, oh. Splendid, oh, oh. splendid, oh, oh. splendid. So many beautiful ladies. Oh. How shall we divide them up, eh, Brandon? Uh, how about Miss, M Miss Dashwood and her sister? go with you while I lend Mrs. Dashwood my brum, and I'm sure the Palmers will not be separated. Oh. I'm also, <laughs> and you'll forgive me, sir, but I've just this moment promised Miss Marianne a chance to ride my high curricle, so we cannot accept your distribution of passengers. Colonel! Colonel Brandon! A man came to the cottage for you. He said to give you this letter right away. What is this? He didn't say, only that it was from Hackney. Gracious Colonel, what oh, is the matter? Uh, Colonel, how may I be of service? Something is uh, Oh, yes, amiss. dear boy, how may we help? Uh, no, thank you, gentlemen. Ladies, my sincerest apologies. This letter, it is business which requires my immediate attendance in town. I must leave at once. Sir John, may I beg a horse of you to take me to Delaford? Of course you can, Brandon, but must you go? We cannot enter Whitwell without you. Oh, no! Cancel our trip to Whitwell? It, it cannot be. I'm mortified and desolate. Are you not the same, Mr. Palmer? <coughs> Crushed beyond measure, my dear. Could you not send a note to the housekeeper, Colonel Brandon? Would that not be sufficient? Alas, no. 
Could you not put off your business for but a day? Well, if you would but tell us what your business is, we may all determine whether it might be postponed. I cannot. You would lose only six hours at most. I cannot afford to lose one hour. I must take my leave of you all. Miss Dashwood, is there no chance of seeing you and your sisters in town this winter? Uh, I'm sorry, sir. No, none at all. Then I must bid you farewell for longer than I wish to do so. Well, some people cannot bear a party of pleasure. Colonel Brandon is one of them. Yeah. I would lay 50 guineas that the letter was one of his own writing. I have no doubt of it. Come, come. We shall still have a day of pleasure. Dancing, playing cards, dining all together. Come, Mrs Jennings. Can it be done, ma'am? Of course done. Of course it can be done. What are we to do today? Well, the weather is so fine for autumn. I could not bear to waste a day inside. It would be insupportable. Oh, we shall ride about the countryside. And I'll teach you to handle my curricle like a complete out-and-outer. Oh, oh, yes, a ride in the countryside. Oh, could anything be finer, Mr P? Almost anything. Oh, yeah, no. It is too fast. You must be more reserved. Do not be so open. No, I abhor concealment and deceit. I cannot deny that I do not have feelings which in themselves are not reprehensible. It would be a sham. I delight in Willoughby's companionship and he in mine. Why should we hide it? <laughs> oh, why, there they go. I hope old Mrs. Smith doesn't take against Marianne, for he is dependent upon her leaving him her fortune, and Mr. Willoughby, I hear, does not live within his current means. <laughs> Come, let us go in and have something to eat before we go after the young people. Let's have, come along in. I can guess the Colonel's business, my dear. It will be Miss Williams, you know. And who is Miss Williams? She's a very near relation, very near. I can hardly say it in front of the young lady. She's his natural daughter, out of wedlock! Mm, oh, a sad, sad case. But she will inherit all of his fortune, you know. <laughs> oh, 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 Mr. Ashford, Providence must have created this opportunity. Would you care to walk with me a while before we go in? Uh, if it please you, Miss Dio. Uh, um, do you still miss Norland? It is very fine, is it not? Nobody who has seen Norland can deny its beauties, but... I fail to see how you... Pardon me, but you will understand me when I speak. Oh, but I must ask you to give your word not to reveal any of what I say to anybody. I... My dear Miss Steele, of course, but... I, I, you will think me very strange for inquiring, but pray, uh, do you know your sister-in-law's mother, Mrs. Ferris? Uh, no, I do not. I'm sorry you do not happen to know Mrs. Ferris. You see, <laughs> she is certainly nothing to me at present, but the time may come when we may be very intimately connected. Good heavens! Are you then acquainted with Mr. Robert Ferris? No, not with Mr. Robert Ferris, but engaged to his eldest brother, Edward. You may well be surprised, for I dare say he never dropped the smallest hint of it to you, because it was always meant to be a great secret. But I do not think Edward can be displeased when he knows I have trusted you because I know he looks upon yourself and the other Miss Dashwoods quite as his own sisters. May I ask if your engagement is of long standing? We have been engaged these four years. Four years? <laughs> yes. He was under my uncle's care, you know, a considerable while, some five years. It was there our engagement was formed. Though you do not know him so well as I, Miss Dashwood, you must have seen enough of him to be aware that he is quite capable of making a woman sincerely attached to him. I beg your pardon, but surely there must be some mistake. We, we cannot mean the same Mr. Ferris. We can mean no other. Mr. Edward Ferris, son of Mrs. Ferris of Park Street, and brother of your sister-in-law, Mrs. Fanny Dashwood. It is strange I should never have heard him even mention your name. Oh, hello. Considering our situation, it was not strange. Our first care has been to keep the matter secret. Four years? You've been engaged. Yes, and heaven knows how much longer we may have to wait. I'm in fear the family will never approve of me. I shall have no fortune. Perhaps it would be better to call it off altogether. <laughs> what do you think? 
pardon me, but I can give you no advice under such circumstances. Your own judgment must direct you. Poor Edward is so cast down by it. Writing to each other is the only comfort we have in such long separations. exercise the privilege of riches on a poor dependent cousin by sending me on business to London. To London? Uh, and you go this morning? At this very moment. Oh dear, that's very unfortunate. But Mrs Smith must be obliged. However, I'm sure her business won't detain you from us for long. You are very kind, but I have no idea of returning into Devonshire immediately. My visits to Mrs Smith are never repeated within the year. But is Mrs Smith your only friend in the neighbourhood? Is Allenham the only home to which you will be welcome? You are too good, but my engagements at present are of such a nature that I, I dare not flatter myself. It is folly to linger in this way. Willoughby, where are you going? When will you be back? He's gone. He didn't even say goodbye. Marianne, dearest, what has happened? Are you not well? Let me be! But, but shall I not fetch a doctor? No doctor can help me. My heart is broken. Willoughby is gone and I shall never see him again. I, I am sure. What you cannot is... possibly understand. You, who have never had a heart to love. You have no idea how I suffer. Marianne, I Enough! Would... I cannot be consoled. Willoughby is gone and I am in ruins. <laughs> Charlotte, she wandered the village of Allenham like a wraith oh. for fully a week, and until the weather turned, she was often on the hills. My girls often walk on the hills, it really is And not... he so close to her when last we came. Recall how Willoughby swept her away on his curtain, now he a chaperone in sight. Well, I said to Mr Palmer, what do you make of that? And what did you think of that? Do you remember? He said... They will return engaged, or else head straight to Gretna. Did you not? I never said anything so trivial and inconsequential. <laughs> Do not palm all your abuses of sense upon me. <laughs> you see how droll he continues. <laughs> Fatherhood does not change to a jot. <laughs> oh, and, and did you hear of Willoughby being at Coombe Magna during your last visit to Cleveland? No. And Coombe Magna is but a mile or so from us, is it not? Five miles of a yard. <laughs> He loves to contradict me. <laughs> I'm so glad you brought Lucy with you, Charlotte. Lucy's still. Look, she's thick there with Miss Eleanor. But my soul, it is good to have another lively young thing here. Let us hope that Lucy may cheer both the Miss Dashwoods. I cannot tell you, Miss Dashwood, how glad I am to see you again, for you are the only person to whom I can speak about Edward. I understand you met him in Plymouth. Yes, briefly. I believe you were staying with your uncle then. Oh, yes. He stayed with us for a blissful fortnight. He's not yet been to Barton, has he? No. Did you not think? 
think him sadly out of spirits. He had made him melancholy not being able to stay longer with us. His mother, old Mrs. Ferris, is very demanding. I heard from him last week. <laughs> you know his hand, of course. <laughs> that is indeed his hand. He has only two thousand pounds of his own. It would be madness to marry on that. We must wait, maybe for many years. With any other man, that might be an alarming prospect. But I know I can be assured of Edward's constant and lasting affection. That conviction must be everything to you. But is not this concealment burdensome? Alas, Mrs. Ferris is so headstrong that she might, upon hearing of Edward's betrothal to me, secure her entire fortune upon Edward's brother, Robert. If only Edward could obtain a living. He is so very anxious to take orders. Mr. Ferris means to enter the church. <laughs> yes, but that too would infuriate his mother. She'd prefer to see him in Parliament or something grand. Poor Mr. Ferris. To be forced to accept a profession distasteful to him. We do seem so beset by difficulties that we should call the engagement off altogether. Now pray advise me, Miss Dashwood. I know of nobody whose judgment I think so highly as I do of yours. That raises my influence much too high. Such a decision is too great for an indifferent person. Oh, but it's because you are indifferent that your judgment has such weight with me. For you have nothing to do with the matter at all yourself. Forgive my impertinence, ma'am, but has a doctor been called to Miss Marianne? Uh, her want of spirits is a, a worry to all her friends. Oh, thank you for your concern, Colonel. But as her mother, I can assure you, I am well used to her moods and spirits, and am well used to caring for her. Uh, of course. I, I did not mean to. I once knew a lady very like her, but should not like to see her in the same situation. Of course. Rest assured, Colonel, that Marianne is surrounded by friends who all wish her well. Yes, of course. It was not my intention to... Excuse me, Ma. Ma, are you quite well? Did Colonel Brandon have news of Willoughby? I don't think so. I'm not quite certain what he was trying to tell me. Has Marianne confided any further in you? We are still, after all these weeks, as a loss as to why he left so suddenly. I am persuaded that Mrs. Smith learned of his regard for Marianne. He must be so unhappy. Then why does he not write? Eleanor, you must make allowances for his feelings too. Like Marianne, he must be devastated at the suddenness of their parting. Yes. But I do wish he'd been less demonstrative of his love before he left, and more so since. I have it! This melancholy will not do. My dear Miss Dashwood, Miss Marianne, will you do me the honour of accompanying me to London and spending the season at our house on Barclay Street? London! Yes. Ma'am, you are all kindness, but we cannot leave our mother all alone. She won't be alone. I will be here. Oh, Lord, I'm sure your mother can spare without you very well. Can you not, Mrs. Dashwood? Indeed, I, I could. But I'm afraid I could not meet the necessary expense of a season in London. Oh, nonsense. I shall see to everything. It will be a boon to me to have lively young people about. And I dare say all the young gentlemen will come to London. So perhaps we may put some light back in those pretty eyes of Miss Marianne's. I have a notion that no one here would object to that. I do. All for good of me. Oh. Left behind. Why, Brandon and I will teach you to shoot. Really? Yep. Yes, please. Indeed. The very idea has already brought the colour back to Marianne's cheeks. And, as Mr. Palmer must attend Parliament, we shall go out to London too, and you, Miss Steele, shall come with us. Oh, oh could anything be fine, my dear? My cup overflows. <laughs> London! Oh, I shall go to London! I must write at once! <laughs>
I am writing to Mama now. Would you not delay your letter a little so that she This letter is not for Mama. Oh. May I ask? Can you not guess? My dear Mama and Meg, we've arrived safe at Barclay Street. The journey, though three days long, did not tax our strength too much. Indeed, dear Marianne seemed to grow in health and beauty with every mile we drew nearer the capital. Perks, is it? Uh, yes, miss. Uh, this letter must be delivered to Mr Willoughby at Cavendish Square at once. Well, miss, I... At once, and there must be an immediate reply. Very well, miss. Mrs Jennings' house is beautiful and elegant, and we are to make afternoon calls tomorrow. She says invitations will flood in once it is known we are in town, and she joked about hiring more footmen to keep the young men from our door. Three days of visits and shopping have quite exhausted me, but Marianne went to Mrs Jennings to see all the riders at Hyde Park early this morning. The weather is very bright and fine for January. Oh, never mind, my dear. There were very many fine young gentlemen to see, even if Mr Willith was not among them. I'm not interested in other fine young gentlemen. Hooks, did you? Uh, yes, miss. Both of them last night and this morning. And? No reply, miss. The week has flown by, dear Mama. The weather continues fine, and we met John and Fanny at an evening party yesterday. They were very surprised to see us both, but recovered admirably and made at least two gracious remarks. Anything, Perks? There is one for you, miss. <gasps> at last! From Meg. There you my dear. The thought occurs. The weather is so fine, it says here, that many sporting gentlemen remain in the country. The hunts are full to bursting, or so it is reported. Of course, you'll be in the country. Do you have a direction for Coombe Magna, Mrs Jennings? I must write at once. Mum, I cannot possibly find a boy to take a letter to Coombe Magna. It's the Tuppany Post perks only so far as the main office. Thank you, Mum. <laughs> Marianne, why are you so sure? I cannot say, but I truly am. You have no confidence in me, Marianne. Nay, Eleanor, but this reproach from you. You who has confidence in no one. Me? But, but I have nothing to tell. Our situations are then very much alike. We neither of us have anything to tell. You, because you will not communicate. And I, because I conceal nothing. Thank you for your letters. Your fears are unfounded, Mama. For Mrs Jennings moves in the most genteel circles, and we have been introduced to no one but people of taste, elegance, and refinement. Mr and Mrs Palmer and Miss Steele are now also in town, for Parliament sits again in February. And Mrs. Palmer tells us her husband's speech is the drollest thing in creation and we must not miss it. The how he used to smuggle us all into the chamber, I cannot fathom. Perks? Sorry, miss. When will the weather change? In London? In winter? Give it half a day, miss. You said that last week. More likely to change now, then. Come, Marianne. Let us go walking this morning. We may go past St James's Square and all the clubs there. Oftentimes a gentleman, not wanting the expense of opening his house for the little season, may take a room at his club instead. Oh, yes. Thank you, Mrs Jennings. The recent rain, dear Meg, makes London a very dirty, miserable place indeed. However, not as wet and miserable as a fallen Sir John's trout stream rendered you. What were you about? Had the man had already told me of your recovery, I should have been most anxious. You know how wet and cold can depress one. But very at least seems to thrive in it. <laughs> Miss Marianne, there's been a visitor. A young gentleman, very elegant, and he left a card. I suppose it could be from... Anyone but... Oh, Willoughby! Oh, at last! He has come at last! How splendid! Oh, what wretched, wretched fortune! How so? That I was not here to greet him, but surely he will! Oh, oh I can't oh, breathe! Uh, uh, perks the door. Girls, give me your shawls. I will not want to see a sad old body <laughs> such as I. Uh, take him to the parlour, and I will lay low, as the Colonel says. <laughs> Brandon. Miss Dashwood, Miss 
Marianne. Excuse me. I have a headache. Colonel, how kind of you to call again. Won't you come in and sit down? Your sister seems out of spirits still. Yes. I, I am sorry. No, but... no. In, in truth, I'm glad I find you alone. Oh. I trust you are well, sir. And all at Delaford? Yes. Yes, indeed. Miss Dashwood, forgive me, but when am I to congratulate you upon the acquisition of a brother? I'm not sure. So, what can you mean? Your sister's engagement to Willoughby is very generally known. It cannot be generally known, for her own family do not know of it. Then, of course, I beg your pardon, but I don't suppose there'd be any secrecy since they correspond so openly and their marriage is universally talked of. How can that be? I must ask, Miss Dashwood, is everything finally settled? Is it impossible to hold? Tell me, tell me that everything is resolved and the concealment is all that remains. Colonel, I... Though I have not been informed by Willoughby or my sister of their formal engagement, I am in no doubt at all of their mutual affection, and their correspondence, I acknowledge, is an open secret. And then to your sister I wish all imaginable happiness, and to Willoughby that he may endeavour to deserve her. 